and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new die sets, Stitched Pumpkins. We're also going to be introducing Stitched Gourds and the Harvest Crate. And I love that these can be used on their own or they can be mixed and matched together in the cutest ways. And we're gonna show you a bunch of ideas in the video today. First up, we're gonna take a look at the stitched pumpkins. And I am so in love with these pumpkins. They're so cute. And I love that we have them in all different styles and sizes and heights. The other really great thing is that we have all these different styles and sizes of the stems and they're pointing in different directions as well. So it gives you all of these different design options. You could put the larger stem on the larger pumpkin or you could even put the larger stem on the smaller pumpkin for a really cute look. These guys are so much fun to mix and match together on a card just featuring them and they're also really great for setting the scene for other fall cards using your favorite fall stamp sets. I mean, look how adorable these pumpkins are turning out. They're just so cute and sweet. You can cut them out of pattern paper, out of colored cardstock, or you can do fun inking techniques. And we're gonna be showing you those in the video today. These pumpkins are also very, very cute to stack on top of each other. I think this is just so sweet. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the stitched gourds. And I love gourds so much. They are so unique and just so beautiful. I love decorating with them for fall. And now I really love putting them on my cards too. And you can see the different styles of gourds. We also have a really cute corn on the cob as well. And you'll see that there's these little pieces that you can layer behind to fill in those open circles on the gourds. And then of course we have all these different styles of stems too. To layer these, all you need to do is put some adhesive on the back of the gourd that has all the detail and then layer the plain one underneath and that's going to fill in all those holes and give it such a pretty look. You can also layer the leaves onto the corn on the cob and then do the same thing with that other gourd. Then we can layer on all of the different stems and just like the pumpkins, you can mix and match these in lots of different ways and I love that they're pointing in different directions and these gourds are so gorgeous and I just love that there's that little corn on the cob too. Now we're gonna take a look at the Harvest Crate and this crate is so adorable. Of course, it has the crate and then it has all of these little panels that you can layer over the crate for detail. And then it has a really fun sign and some words that you can die cut out of the sign. And so it's the word thanks and all you need to do is just layer it over the sign. You can run it through the die cut machine and then you'll have this great decorative word. What I like to do then is to die cut another piece that's blank and you can just layer that behind to help fill in the thanks word. So here you can see that we've die cut these different pieces out of two different shades of brown cardstock. We have chocolate bar and paper bag. We're just gonna add some adhesive behind these panels and then layer them over top. And you can see as you start to layer these panels over top, it really gives this just gorgeous detail to the crate. This crate is so cute because you can fill it with the pumpkins and the gourds and have this great fall thing, but you could imagine how we could fill it with strawberries or other summery things too. So I love that this crate could be something really cute all year round. Now here we have that thanks sign that we layered there, which looks so cute. And then we have the little post for the sign. And so we're just gonna layer the sign right over top and then you can stick that into the harvest crate and it's a really fun way to put a sentiment on the card. The other thing that you can do with this sign is you could also stamp on it. So you can shop your stash and find some smaller sentiments that'll fit on there. This I Heart You comes from the So Very Mice stamp set, but we have a ton of sets that have thank yous, hellos, happy birthdays, etc. that would look amazing in that sign. And it gives you a totally different option for adding your sentiment and a different look as well. And I really love that I Heart You on the sign. I think it's so sweet. Next up, we're gonna start matching our pumpkins and gourds with the Harvest Crate. So you can see how cute this is. You could fill it with just pumpkins. You could have a bunch of different shades of pumpkins, which would be adorable. You can also add the gourds in. You could just do corn on the cobs. I mean, this is just the cutest thing ever. I can't tell you how much fun it is to fill this little crate. It makes me just so ready for fall and it's just so sweet. And the cards with this turn out adorably. You could also have a completely die cut card or you could bring cute little stamped images like mice into the scene with this crate of gourds. And right now we're gonna start creating a card. So we're gonna be die cutting some of these super cute pumpkins and also our corn on the cob. And we're just kind of looking through here, seeing what things might be cute for the card. And then we're also gonna bring in some of the small stitch leaves there just for some extra decoration. Then Giant Happy Fall is going to be our perfect sentiment. And I love this color palette for fall. I think it's just so pretty. 
Now to add some fun details to these pumpkins and gourds and also our sentiment, we're going to be doing some inking and some splattering. Of course this card would be cute just cut out of colored cardstock, but there's something so much fun about inking. So here we have our artichoke ink and we're just going to ink the top and the bottom of this sentiment and it's going to make it feel like the whole thing was ink blended and it kind of makes the whole thing glow. I just think it's just so pretty. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the stems here. We're gonna also be using that same artichoke ink that gives this really nice little detail on them. Now we're gonna use some chili pepper ink over this canned pumpkin cardstock. And isn't that so pretty? It just gives such a gorgeous detail. Then for some extra detail, we're gonna do some splatters. We're gonna take that same exact ink pad, smear it on our craft mat, spray a little bit of water, and then pick it up with a paintbrush and just tap it over the pumpkins. And this is really quick and easy to do and it just makes the pumpkins look gorgeous. Now for this next one, we're gonna be using some different ink. So we're gonna be using some pumpkin spice ink on these guys and we're also going to be doing that same splatter technique. And right now we are recreating a card by Audrey. So thank you so much, Audrey. Your card is so gorgeous. So now we're gonna start working on another color of gourd and also corn on the cob. And when I'm picking an ink color to ink up my gourds and splatter with, I usually try to pick an ink color that's just a little bit darker than the color of cardstock that I have and maybe has a little bit more brown in it because that's gonna give it that really fun kind of natural look. Now we tried to do some splatters with the number two pencil, but it wasn't dark enough. So we're gonna bring in some walnut ink, which is a brown, to darken up that number two pencil and add a little bit more texture. So if you ever think that the splatters aren't quite dark enough, by adding in a brown, it's gonna give you a really, really great look. Now we're gonna take all these beautiful pumpkins and gourds and set them aside, and we're gonna do some hot foiling with this wood grain background. So our platform was ready, we had our green light, we put our hot foil plate on, press the timer button. It takes about a minute, I did some magical fast forwarding here for the light to be a solid green there. And we're gonna take some copper hot foil and lay it over face down. We're gonna put our piece of cardstock there, which is some paper bag cardstock, and then the two plates that the hot foil machine comes with. We're gonna pop this off and run it through our die cut machine off camera and then bring it back and we're gonna have this beautiful wood grain hot foil that is just gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna give this really pretty sparkle and shine to the card. I just love how pretty this is and it makes me wanna put wood grain hot foil on every card I make this fall. Now here is our largest outside in stitched rectangle stackable and we're gonna be die cutting this hot foil here. And then we're also going to be die cutting some paper from the brand new favorite flannel collection. And this color is called eggnog and it's like this perfect color that's just beautiful for fall and makes a really nice subtle background. And so we're going to die cut that with the eggnog paper as well. Then we're gonna bring out that happy fall sentiment that we added some ink to earlier and kind of use it as a guide as to see how high we want this ground to be. And I always kind of like to layer it over top, kind of see what looks good. And then from there, we can just trim that off. The nice thing is I can now save this wood grain hot foil piece and use it for a ground on other cards in the future too. We'll add some tape runner onto that and then layer it onto that favorite flannel paper to create this most beautiful cozy fall background. Now for the happy fall words, we're gonna add a bunch of foam tape and foam squares to it so that it has this really great pop. And for letters like these, I love using that foam tape. It makes it so easy to layer it on top and then we can add it right onto the card. Then we're gonna take a piece of chocolate bar cardstock that's gonna be five and a half by four and a quarter. And we'll take this whole panel and layer this over top. And I really love that brown border around. I just love all the different shades of brown. It's just so pretty. Now all of our pumpkins and gourds have dried so we can start layering the pieces together. So we're gonna add the leaves onto the cob there, which looks just so cute. And then we can start to add the little stems on to the pumpkins and gourds and also layer the gourd as well. So we're gonna layer that gourd there on to a piece of craft cardstock and that's gonna fill in all those little details. And then now we can start adding the different tops and different shades of brown and green. I love this larger little stem on the small pumpkin. I just think that's so sweet. And then here you can see that we put a little stem on the taller pumpkin, which I think is really adorable. And then kind of just started playing around and said, you know what, I think the smaller stem might look better on this one. And then that little loopy stem there might actually look really great on this pumpkin. So I love the mix and match and you can mix and match the stems from the pumpkins and the gourds too. So the gourd can have a pumpkin stem and the pumpkins can have a gourd stem and everything looks amazing and gives you a bunch of different design options. 
Now we're gonna start layering the corn on the cob and all of our pumpkins and everything onto the card. Some of them are gonna go on there with some tape runners so that it's flat, and other ones we're gonna add some foam squares to just to give it some really nice dimension. Then we can layer some of those small stitched leaves. I love these small stitch leaves. Every year I bring them back in fall because they add just this great little element. And I love that little pop of turquoise teal in there. I just think it's so pretty. Now this card looks super cute as is, but we had to bring out a fall favorite, which is the Happy Harvest stamp set and bring in those cute little crows. And how adorable are these? I just love them so much. So we're gonna add some foam squares on the back of those and then layer them into the scene, either having this one flying in or having them layered on the gourds. You could imagine that using the mice that we have in a ton of stamp sets would look really, really cute with the gourds as well. Now that we added our last little crow, we're gonna take out a standard size card base. It's five and a half by four and a quarter, and we can layer this whole panel on top. And now this card is all done, and it's so super cute. I love the idea of bringing in some stamped critters to these gourds, and the splatters and the inking make them feel and look so special. And next up, Shari has three cards to share with you guys that are absolutely stunning. So take it away, Shari. So first up, I'm creating a card with stitched pumpkins. I have three pumpkins here cut from some number two pencil cardstock, some canned pumpkin cardstock, and some sage cardstock. I've also cut these two little leaves from cilantro. Now these leaves come from the pumpkin house die set, and I just cut those to have some greenery to fill in behind my pumpkins. I am adding a little bit of shading to each of these by pulling out the inks that coordinate with these colors. So you can see I have pumpkin spice ink. I'm just inking up the bottom of that canned pumpkin cardstock. For this one, I will use that number two pencil ink on the number two pencil cardstock. And it does look pretty dark right here, but as it absorbs in, it lightens up a little bit. And then I will pull out the sage leaf ink for the sage cardstock pumpkin. And this just adds a little bit of dimension and I think it makes that stitching detail stand out just a bit more. Now for the stems, I have three cut here from some paper bag cardstock and I'm just using some walnut ink to kind of darken up the bottom of them. Then I can use my liquid glue to add my stem to each of my pumpkins. So for that large pumpkin on the bottom, I did use the large stem. And then for this middle pumpkin and the one on top, that little guy, I'm using that smaller stem. This die set also has that swirly stem, which is fun, but I didn't want to cover up the pumpkins too much because I'm going to stack them one on top of the other. So here I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue to the bottom of each pumpkin and then stacking the one below it layered on top. So now I have this cute stack of pumpkins and I'll set those aside and now I'm going to work on the background parts of my card. So I've pulled out the fruit salad six by six paper pack and I really like this kind of taupey brown color. It's gonna be great for fall cards too. I also have some sage card stock and I'm cutting them with some stitch rectangles. These will layer on top of each other. Now before I start to assemble things, I do want to stamp my sentiment and I love this grid paper because it makes it really easy to line your sentiments up and I'm stamping it with some walnut ink. Then for the main part of the sentiment, I'm using that scripty thanks from the thanks 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 stamp set and I'm going to white emboss this onto a piece of ground coffee cardstock. So I've just already used my anti-static powder tool. I'm stamping it with some clear embossing ink. Then I will add some white embossing powder. And then I'll take my heat tool and melt that embossing powder so I get that bright white sentiment. Then of course, this thanks, thanks, thanks stamp set has coordinating dies for the big thanks words. So I'll just use the coordinating die and cut this out and this way I can layer it over my pumpkins at the bottom. I'm just going to set these aside and work on the card base now. I do have a card base made from some speckled eggshell cardstock and I want to create a subtle leaf pattern on that background. 
So I have the Fall Leaves background stencil. I'm starting with the first one here and I'm just going in very lightly with apricot ink. So it is a pale color with that little bit of peachy orange. And this is gonna go great with my fall colors of my pumpkins. And again, I'm keeping my hand very light so that it is a very subtle texture on this card base. And then I can pull in the second stencil and line it up and just fill in in between. You could do two colors if you wanted, but I want this to look very tone on tone and I'm trying to keep that outside pattern card base simple. And you can see that I am not really too worried about the center too terribly much. That's going to get covered up with the stitch rectangles and the pumpkins. Next, I will layer those two stitch rectangles together, and I like how this creates that thin frame of the sage cardstock around it and separates that neutral card base from the neutral plaid paper. I'm lining up my pumpkins, making sure everything's nice and straight. And I did put them a little bit high from the sentiment I stamped so that this die cut thinks fits in there nicely. Then I'm adding some thin foam squares to the leaves. I put thicker foam squares on the pumpkins and I'm just tucking those in behind that pumpkin at the bottom so it looks kind of like it has a base of leaves where it's sitting. Then I've pulled out some natural jute twine and I'm wrapping this around the card base about five times. And then I'll tie it to this side over here, to the left side. This is something I do like to do on fall cards a lot. I think it brings in some fun fall texture and just adds a little bit of embellishment to the card. I've put foam tape all over the back of that panel with the pumpkins, and then I'm just gonna layer this right over top of that twine and pop that right on the card, making sure my bow is sticking out past that rectangular panel on the left. And then finally, I'm adding some glitter to the top of my pumpkin so it has some shine. And then here is my finished card with that really fun stack of pumpkins and all those fun fall colors. Next, we're going to be combining those stitch pumpkins with the stitch gourds, as well as the harvest crate. So I've already cut all my pieces out in those bright, colorful cardstock colors, and I'm going to do some ink blending on all of these to really kind of brighten them up and give them some character. I'm using pumpkin spice on this pumpkin. This pumpkin is cut from some fake tan cardstock, so I'm taking a shade darker of ink on this one rather than trying to match to the same color. For all the other ones, I will be using Distress inks. This one is Crackling Campfire, which is a really nice orangey red, and it really worked perfect on the canned pumpkin cardstock pumpkin here. Then I have these gourds. These are cut from peacock cardstock. And then I'm using Uncharted Mariner to add my shading and detail. And these might be my favorite ones in the crate because they're just so bold and eye-catching in those teal and blue colors. Next, let's move on to the corn, and I'm going to use some fossilized amber for the corn. This yellow combo would be great for any of the gourds as well, just depending on the look you want. I think it would be fun to make a whole crate full of those gourds that have the little spots that you cut out, and then you layer the pieces behind. Now for my greens, I've cut these from cilantro cardstock, and I'm using peeled paint distress ink to darken up and add some shading. I do think it's really kind of fun. This piece of paper I'm working on is starting to look like some fun graffiti just from my ink from the sides of the die cuts. I am flipping it over though to do my little pumpkin here. This is cut from vanilla malt cardstock. And I'm using antique linen to give it that sort of white pumpkin look. I just didn't want to accidentally pick up any of those colors I had on the other side when I was adding it to the white pumpkin. 
Now to color the crate. So for the crate, I cut these boards that layer across the front from some brown wood grain cardstock. And then I cut the crate itself from some paper bag cardstock. And I'm just using some gathered twigs distress ink and inking this up kind of randomly, sort of on the ends. You're gonna see me kind of flip them around and then do some like across the top just so that they're all different. I want them to look all different, just like the slats of a crate. I'm doing the same thing to the little sign that comes in the Harvest Crate die set. This was also cut from some wood grain cardstock. And then for the crate body itself, I was kind of looking to see how much contrast I had. I wanted the body to look a little bit darker where you do see it between the slats. So I'm just adding some more of that Gathered Twigs ink. There's also these little stems in the gourd set. They're also cut from paper bags, so I'm adding that same Gathered Twigs ink to all of those little tops that will go on my gourds. Now for the pumpkins, I cut the tops from cilantro, so you're gonna see me go back in with that same peeled paint ink and do the tops of my pumpkins so that everything has a little bit of inking and shading. Even these little bitty ones here, a lot of inking and care went into these little pieces for this card. Now that everything is inked, I can start to assemble some of these items. So I'm starting out with all my pumpkins and gourds. I'll add the shucks to the corn, which I think this would be fun if you had like a line of corn on a card. Then for this gourd here, this is cut from the cilantro. I'm layering some number two pencil cardstock behind it. So that kind of darker, dirtier yellow color. I liked that the spots were contrasting colors from the body. I'm doing the same on this one. I'm adding cilantro behind. This one is the front is cut from the peacock. So I get the green spots with the blue front. I also want to add my little stems. So this little stem is from the gourd set. It comes with this style stem as well as that kind of curly Q style stem that curls back on itself. And then I'm using the curly stems from the pumpkin set for my pumpkins in this layout for the big pumpkins. That curly stem is a little too big for that small pumpkin. So he'll just get the little stem. And then I have these swirly brown stems for the gourds. I thought these looked really cool on these gourds that kind of have the long necks that turn over. And then I'll use this little one on this guy here. So now they're all assembled there. And I think they look kind of cool all in a line too. I think that would be kind of interesting to do on a slimline card. Now for my crate, I decided I wanted to do a little bit extra and see a different color through the holes of those slats that go on the front. So I just added some black marker right where those holes are gonna be. And then I'm just adding some liquid glue, making sure to avoid the holes, obviously. So that's why I did a dot on each side and a line through the middle. And then now where those little holes are, are black, so it looks like the nails holding the crate together. Now for the little sign, there is the thanks that you can cut out of it. So that is what I'm going to do on this card. You could also stamp a sentiment in this if it's nice and short. I'm layering a piece of sunflower cardstock behind so you can see the sentiment. And then for the post that it is on, that is cut from some ground coffee cardstock as well. And then I'm pulling out my gold metallic watercolors and I'm adding some small gold splatters all over these pumpkins and gourds. And I really love the look of this, especially on that kind of darker inked area of these die cuts. I think that the gold splatter makes them look kind of magical. Now 
Now for the background, I have a piece of mermaid cardstock cut with the largest of the stitched rectangles. And then I'm taking the next size down, which is the largest of the small stitched rectangle stackables, and cutting a piece of that cream colored favorite flannel paper. I'm also using a piece of rainforest cardstock to cut some ground for my crate to sit on with the simple stitch hillside. You are going to see me change this to be cilantro cardstock here in a little bit because as I put this card together, I really did like that rainforest cardstock, but I decided I wanted it to be a little bit brighter, so I switched it out for some cilantro. And when I say switched out, I glued it over top of what you see here because I just glued those down. Anyway, as I fill my crate, I'm putting that big pumpkin, one of the gourds and the corn in there. I kind of arranged them and then I flipped it over and added some liquid glue underneath where that slat was and that's going to hold them in place nicely. I'm just going to pop this on here and then start to arrange the items that are in front of the crate. And this is going to help cover up whatever void is underneath the things in the crate. You could also layer something behind it so it didn't look empty like the things sticking out were floating. Once I have my placement where I like it, I'm just going to go in, add some dots of glue, and secure all of these pumpkins and gourds down in their place. This is kind of making this whole piece one big die cut. And if you're wondering why that pumpkin had gingham on the back, it was a leftover piece from another project. I always hold on to my pieces of cardstock if they're big enough to get something out of. Now here is where I'm switching over to cilantro. And what I did was I just cut it a little bit taller than this piece of rainforest cardstock I have on here. And when I glue it down, it's gonna hide it completely. Like I said, I did like that color, but I just wanted to kind of brighten it up a little bit and make those gourds and pumpkins really stand out. Now I'm adding some adhesive all over the back of my mermaid stitch rectangle and I'm adding this to a card base. And then I will add my favorite flannel paper with that cilantro hillside on there. And then for this whole crate full of all these harvest goodies, I added some foam tape all over the back so the piece as a whole will get popped up. And that's why I kind of liked assembling this all as one and then putting it on the card. Then I will tuck the little thanks sign back there. I'm trying to figure out where I like it best. I think here, but I wanted it down a little bit further. And since I got some foam back there, I'm just going to trim off the bottom of the post so I can tuck it a little bit more down into my crate. And then here is my finished card. I really love all these colorful pumpkins and gourds. I love the look that that extra inking and the gold flecks added to it. I think it's really fun and I can't wait to make some more of these for some more cards. I think it would be fun to experiment with some other bright colors as well. Now for my next card, I had all these pieces sitting on my desk. I had some extra pumpkins, I had an extra crate I had built, and so I'm just going to pull together another quick card. These pumpkins happen to be cut from some oranges from the textured canvas cardstock packs. So I have that big one tucked in there. I'm going to add this one on the front with some foam squares. I use thin foam squares on that darker pumpkin, and then for the little pumpkin, I'm going to use some regular thickness foam and pop it up just a little bit more. So I've got some dimension between all those pumpkins in the crate. I also had these little vines sitting on my desk. This is from the outside in stitched maple leaf die set and I'm just going to tuck those in as well. Now for my background I'm pulling out that favorite flannel 6x6 six six pad and I've got this kind of aqua diagonal that I think looks really good behind these pumpkins. I've also pulled out the Simple Fall Sentiment stamp set, and I'm going to use the So Grateful For You stamp. I did want this stacked, so I did cut my stamp. Don't freak out. I can always put it back together when I want to stamp everything in a line. I'm just stamping this with some black ink 
you get that nice big black sentiment and I did feel like it needed something a little bit more so I cut a leaf from that pumpkin house die out of some noble fur cardstock just to tuck it right in there I just felt like there was sort of a void there when I put it on my card I've got a piece of that rainforest cardstock cut with the largest stitch rectangle and I'm putting this onto my card base so I am pulling in that rainforest color eventually and I think it really frames up this piece of plaid paper nicely. Now before I put that on there because I am going to pop that up with some foam I'm going back to my jute twine here and wrapping that around my card four or five times and then I'll tie a bow again to the left like I did before. Like I said, this is one of my favorite embellishments for fall cards because I think it gives it that rustic look and gives it some nice texture. Also, that brown natural color really matches the fall colors that we use in our fall cards. I put foam tape all over the back of that panel and then I'll just pop this right in the center here and stick that down. This twine is pretty thin, so when you put all this foam over top of it, this foam adhesive, it really holds it down and you don't even see any bumps. Now I can add my crate full of pumpkins. And I just think this is really fun in this portrait orientation. I like the vines in my crate kind of going off the side of my panel. Now for my glitter on this card, I decided to only add glitter to the stems of the pumpkins and then also the little leaves on the vines. And then here is my finished card. I think it turned out really great and it was fun to kind of make a quick card out of things that were all left on my desk from other projects. I think this really shows off the crate a bit more too. Oh my goodness, Shari, I am so in love with all of your cards. This one is so cute and that crate looks amazing in the wood grain paper with the inking and then the gold splatters. Oh my goodness. And all these different colors. I love that pop of teal in this. And then the little stack of pumpkins might be my absolute favorite. It feels so magical and beautiful. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this card by Callie is just stunning. I love her crate and all of those fun colors. Here I was just blown away by this card by Yanea. She added a bunch of details to her gourds with markers and I think that's just stunning. This card here by Rebecca is so sweet and I just love the little thanks sign there in the crate. And then, oh my goodness, these rainbow gourds by Letitia. Could that be more beautiful? Oh, I am so in love and can't wait to make a card just like it. Here, I love how Mindy used the new Hey There Hayrides mice add-on to add the mice into the crate. It is so cute. And then, oh my goodness, this card by Elise, the lined up gourds. I love it so much. And she used gold metallic cardstock for all the stems. Oh, so beautiful. Megan's background of pumpkins are so cool. I just love it so much. It's like she created her own custom pattern paper using die cuts. And then this platform pop-up by Shari is so much fun. I love her little pumpkin patch. And then here is the card by Audrey that inspired us to make ours. And oh my goodness, we cannot wait to see what you guys are going to create with the stitch pumpkins and gourds and crate. Oh my, we're so excited. So thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.